the research article based on the project of Euriscom uh, back in 2002 by Lisiardi et al. mentions exclusively on the service offerings in next generation networks and analyzes various tools and technologies. We are going to look at the environment that the authors call the open customization environment by referring to open source tools, technologies and frameworks which are provided for various services. So we are going to look at the service features and corresponding technology and the service logic that could be implemented. The open customized environment actually refers to the wide array of NGN products uh, which are uh, uh, identified on the basis of the public documentation that uh, uh, that's publicly available. After going through the uh, functionality of each of these uh, tools and technologies, request for information is issued to the vendors to identify the best uh, development environment. Um, some of these uh, um, tools and technologies are mentioned in here, but this is um, an increasingly expanding list. Uh, we'll start off with uh, extensible telephony markup language, CPL, voice extensible markup language, um, the enterprise Java beans, Java to enterprise edition, uh, the uh, common gateway interface for session in the initiation protocol, and the SIP servlets. The XTML is a standard adopted by the World Wide Web Consortium. Uh, it actually identifies the service by describing uh, the features of the service and associated execution framework. So it actually um, clearly distinguishes between the service description and the service execution. Uh, it offers the uh, basic enablers or the constructs to embed external um, um, standards and protocols as well. Uh, for example, the, uh, the distributed component object model by Microsoft and the enterprise Java beans uh, for Java. Um, so the XTML uh, basically is meant to process the events um, for uh, call initiation, call termination, etc. And it's based on uh, uh, proxying, uh, process execution, and even redirection if a particular call cannot be handled. Uh, then we have the call processing language. It is uh, again uh, XML based. It is a simple static language. Uh, it, it describes um, the call invitations uh, as the uh, invites on the basis of which the call can subsequently be processed uh, by giving a call execution graph known as the call control service logic. Uh, this is primarily designed for uh, SIP, but it also e works equally good for H.323, which is a sister protocol to SIP, but uh, it's connection oriented. Uh, CPL is easy to implement and uh, it is not as thorough as uh, XTML, but uh, it's mostly used for service customization, not for creating services from the scratch. Uh, then we have uh, voice XML. It is basically a user interface that uh, takes audio as the input and gives audio as the output. Um, so for input, it uses uh, either uh, uh, speech recognition for user to give input to the system or uh, the dual tone multi-frequency, uh, the, the tones which are standard, av standard available in um, the 12, um, button uh, keypad. Uh, the uh, pre-recorded audios and uh, text-to-speech are uh, served as uh, uh, are served as output. So essentially voice XML provides a mapping mechanism uh, as a kind of a dialogue between the uh, input that user gives and the output that the application gives. Um, so th essentially this creates kind of a, a tree-like structure uh, that implements uh, voice browsing. This involves uh, uh, the capability for the user or the programmer to present uh, 
different uh, logical flows and uh, event handling mechanisms. Uh, then we have the Java-led technologies, which are widely used in web app development. Um, Java uh, for the um, integrated networks or the intelligent networks offers APIs uh, for creation of uh, various telephony services. Uh, these services are again, I would summarize, call uh, creation, call establishment, uh, call termination, uh, call receiving, redirection, um, voicemail, etc. These services are based on uh, Java and uh, there are some specific libraries. Uh, for example, we have Java messaging service uh, for uh, SMS, MMS uh, and um, IVR, in Interactive Voice Response. Uh, then we have Java Authentication and Authorization Service um, that provides AAA. Uh, then we have uh, uh, XML Processing, uh, JAXP, that enables the application to process XML code in uh, Java understandable um, language. Uh, then we have the uh, small servlets. Uh, servlets actually provide execution environment at the server end. So um, uh, SIP servers that are used for uh, proxying, registration, etc. Um, uh, these can be accessed for uh, NGN uh, if uh, SIP servlets are invoked. Uh, this servlet model is uh, quite interesting because it allows a customer to define the server functionality uh, versus the applet that runs on the uh, customer equipment. The SIP server functionality is actually extended through the uh, caller, callee, uh, application specific business logic. And uh, uh, now the SIP servlets are since borrowed from, uh, from Java uh, servlets. So these run on uh, Java environments only, which is essentially bytecode. So the inherent advantages or, and disadvantages of running a bytecode come into uh, play. Then we have the common gateway um, interface. Uh, it, it is an extension to uh, the SIP um, servlets because it allows uh, multiple um, programming uh, languages to be incorporated. Essentially, SIP CGI is an expanded version of SIP servlet. This uh, diagram provides an interesting um, uh, scoping of various technologies. Uh, as we can see, uh, EJB and J2EE actually enter into the media gateway jurisdiction. The uh, Most of these are in the application uh, server end, that is uh, the, the server side execution. Um, but uh, XTML and EJB provide the application creation environment as well. And as we had said, uh, CPL is uh, uh, mostly limited to uh, the configuration of the uh, existing applications. The paper by Lisiardi is an interesting read to provide starting understanding to enter deeper into the uh, service configuration for NGNs.